Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. Super important, man. Frequency about every week on this. I, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, you know, I, I do this for, for a very, very simple reason. And I, I just want to premise this. As this company starts to move up and starts to gain a little bit of momentum, uh, that of which it has none right now, zero. Sentiment is as low as it's ever been. No problem. Conviction, as high as it's ever been. Uh, I give kudos and compliments to those folks that have been uh, sticky investors. I allude to them in this video, okay? We're gonna jump into the website and I'm going to give uh, some visual uh, visuals. This is gonna be a little bit more entertaining. It's not gonna be me just droning on for an hour. Um, this is gonna be a little more extended of a video. If you can't sit through it for the entire time in respect of your time, I, I totally get it. It's super important. I could just as easily split these up into five videos and put them out through YouTube. Um, I, I'm not doing this for any other reason, but for awareness for uh, a company that, that I believe is on the precipice of something great. And uh, the lower the stock price goes, the higher my conviction gets. That's simple. Um, I think we've got a community that is absolutely fantastic. They get it. They see below the surface. Uh, this company is not going to zero. Okay. It, uh, it is doing things right now that I think I will allude to in this video that I think um, really speaks to the opportunity here. And, you know, at, at just over $4 a share, I, I think it, it is um, one of those things that I find ironic all the time that the lower the stock goes, the more of an opportunity has been presented. Um, that's a fact, Jack. Whether or not you want to disagree with me or not, there's going to be bulls and bears in this case, and, and bears seemingly that may, perhaps maybe have been burned by the company, want to see it fail. I, I don't understand any of that thought. Um, to do or not to do, which means to invest or not to invest. Um, there's seemingly a lot of people who have a, an extremely vested interest into seeing the, the, this company fail or go under or, I don't know, stick it to Thomas Healy or whatever your motivation would be. Um, this is just a company uh, and it's represented through a recessed stock price at this, this particular juncture. Um, and I, I speak uh, in this video about some of the opportunities that you can find not only through Hylion.com, which has been a, inc incredibly improved upon. Um, almost real time. It's one thing that doesn't get talked about all the time in, in giving due credit to uh, telling the highly on story. Uh, yeah, the, the social media thing uh, and the scrutiny that they receive about not being forward, yada, yada. I, I, you know, I've been one of those uh, folks that have, uh, have said that I think they need to do better. Um, they've improved upon that front just as of late. I, I, is it because of us? Hell, probably not. Um, anybody who thinks that we have that level of an influence on a company that I think believes they hold the cards, I believe they do. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in this video, some of the major things going on. Um, really want to talk about foot stomp, the importance of how I, th I think this local and state government grant incentives are going to play into this, uh, especially with the, uh, uh, with the TURP program in Texas. Uh, I think that's huge. Um, I, I really want to discuss where the RNG um, uh, uh, build out uh, has been the last five years, up 577% uh, in fuel availability and where that could potentially go into the future. Uh, the uh, industry shift in sentiment and what's going to help drive that sentiment uh, and help really push them over uh, into uh, physical application. Uh, of some of these solutions in their fleets uh, to drive the carbon scores for their businesses uh, on their environmental stewardship scores. Um, how Hylion is taking their approach, and I'm going to walk through the website with you guys. You're going to find this extremely educating. If you knew nothing about Hylion Holdings, man, stay with me. Spend 60 minutes in education on this particular topic, your, your uh, understanding of this company that I believe is providing a ground level uh, of an entry at this point um, doesn't happen every day. And once it is ceased to exist, um, you don't get to go back and do it again. It, it doesn't work that way. Um, this is a company that I feel like right now, if nothing else is provided, um, just as good as ever of an opportunity to invest in the company. It's, it's that simple. You know, if you if you look at it, want to argue with me and say, well, everybody was wanting to buy it at fifty eight, right? Right now, Ryan, why would anybody want to buy it at four? Ask yourself that question in the mirror, and then come back to me with a with a really good answer as to why it's a better buy at four dollars than fifty eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, talk about some of my convictions surrounding 
the company at this point, some of those real nuggets of granular takeaway when you do a deep dive on this company. And it's, there's too much, there's too much juicy um, with the amount of hiring uh, spree that's been going on just as of late. I mean, this is groundbreaking within the last week or so. Um, I just received a, a correspondence summary that I plan on sharing with the Facebook group. You're going to want to join that. If you're serious about this company and wanting to know about it, bull or bear, doesn't matter. You've got the Facebook group. You have the highly on Discord group, which is fantastic. Many, many of the patrons come in and support my message, man. My hats go off to you. I'm doing everything I can possibly do. You can tell how intent I am. Um, I'm a bullish shareholder in the company for full disclosure. Um, I don't do this to boost the stock. I don't believe that's even possible. Um, but I'll foot stomp the education piece in this video, talk about how important that is um, in, in really understanding the below the surface opportunity with this company and what they're trying to do. I'll talk about the technology, the data, the machine learning, the algorithmic data processing, et cetera, to improve not only the driver experience, but also the data that's made uh, um, uh, available back to the companies with regard to preventative maintenance, uh, smarter route planning, and the sort. Uh, this has a technology element to it that cannot be ignored. Absolutely can't. Talk about other sources of really good information. Another shout out for, for Paul with Rat Pack Stocks with Drive Mix Game. Um, I would ask you guys, if, if you feel like you're supporting me at a time where I'm you know, putting out uh, uh, over than uh, over than average uh, information highly on, uh, and you don't like to do that, and you, and you feel like you want to stick it to the man, uh, unsubscribe, no problem. If you don't appreciate this information, there's a reason why I'm putting it out with the frequency that I am. It's just that simple. There's a reason why I'm putting it out with the frequency that I am, because it speaks to the opportunity that uh, exists. It exists right here. It, it's right in front of your freaking face. And I think there's going to be a lot of momentum players out there. I think there's going to be a lot of bandwagon players out there that all of a sudden are, again, uh, highly on fans that will come on board when this thing hits 5, 7, 12. I speak a little bit to the investor sentiment and the stickiness of, the, of this community. Those shares aren't going to go anywhere. When this company goes up, those shares will not be sold off. They will not. Um, because people who understand what I understand about this company are not holding to go to 12. We're not holding to go to 25. I'm, I'm holding to go to 100 plus, okay? You want to invest to make 20, 25% outpace the market, which has been proven futile and impossible. Do away with all that crap and just buy index funds. This game right here, this is different. We, I'm not going for 25% of appreciation here. If that's your goal and you can do that, great. It is not mine. The deeper the conviction on a company, the more you can understand that as the true opportunity is realized and the landscape that Hylian is going after here is starting to realize as we go from low scale production into uh, mass scale production on the low end to start. Yes, um, I've got my min minimum number of units that I believe the company will make with no problem with regard to all of their networking connections. Guys, they're not making these hires to, to put on dresses and go to a party that's nobody there. They're just not doing that. Um, and it'll be part of my question for Thomas Healy on the earnings call coming up here. Um, I plan on trying to getting a couple uh, questions into the docket as well. Um, I will ask those specific to his bullish thesis uh, as to why he's doing this uh, aggressive hiring and what he sees on the landscape to build out that team so aggressively when the stock market is, is so heavily discounting the highly on opportunity, something's got to give, something's got to give. Bears will say the company's going to zero. We'll talk about that. Uh, bulls will say that eventually um, the time necessary will be the, the vital ingredient to this recipe uh, playing out over time um, as the bullish convi uh, conviction and thesis comes to fruition for the company uh, going forward. So with that, guys, I want to jump into the Highland website offer a tutorial from my perspective here. Um, I've covered the company since uh, the beginning. And uh, it's been a pleasure to do so. I enjoy this. Um, you, you always have to stay hungry. There is no infinite end to this. This is an infinite topic. There is no finite end to this game. There's, there, there's not a race that's being raced here in that you're going to end up at the end of the race and be like, okay, what now, Ryan? It doesn't work that way. A company like this that's on the ground floor after two years of, 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 of public markets in two different capacities is just that it's on the onside. It's at the beginning of its, of its stages. The scary question is, where is it going to be in five? 
Where is it going to be in 10? Where is it going to be in 20? As some of these paradigm shifts in the industry that are very, very real are realized. So let's kick into the website, man, and go through the tutorial here on hold, uh, Hyleon Holdings. Uh, for those of you guys that are unfamiliar with the uh, Hyleon system, sometimes it takes uh, uh, someone to walk you through it. It's, um, it's fascinating what they've done here. Um, a relatively uh, simple concept, not so simple to, uh, you know, to uh, fine tune. And uh, with the help of FEV, uh, they've gone through um, the, the the line items and each of each and every one of these um, uh, schematics that they've got on the Hyleon system. But um, Hyleon has done a wonderful job in breaking down for you uh, what it is they envision uh, in. Uh, basically a new truck and the the parts of the truck that need to be uh, rethought uh, and I think most importantly to be honest with you uh, not taking away from the driver experience in leaving the remainder of the truck untouched the aesthetics um, the, the the drive and, and feel of, of the truck should remain the same uh, actually should improve um, with the uh, quiet ride that the uh, Hypertruck ERX does uh, provide uh, for the driver. Um, so just a quick tutorial on this for you guys that are unfamiliar, for you guys that are um, in the Hylion community and um, uh, understand that this is a, a, a critical uh, product that they, that they have. Um, it is unavailable right now for mass scale. They are in the process of uh, validation, uh, both with their uh, fleet um, Rocho, uh, as well as their outreach that they're doing right now uh, within their fleets, uh, within their sales team to uh, really educate. And so the whole point of this video is going to be education, uh, Hylion 101. For anybody that's uh, unfamiliar with the Hylion opportunity, um, I'm going to run you through a tutorial from my perspective on what we're seeing here. So very, very simple. Um, on the back end of the cab, you've got the um, uh, RNG tank, uh, that's uh, item one. And you can follow along here. Hylion has done a great job of upgrading their website to really explain and walk you through the processes if you're uh, unfamiliar with it. So uh, if you just kick over to Hylion.com, this is fascinating stuff. I, I love studying Hylion. I love studying the company insights. I scour the website. Um, since they've turned uh, uh, public, they have done a fabulous, and I do mean fabulous job of increasing their uh, information and availability of said information on their website. They're almost real time um, with their with their information on the website on what they feel is important. Okay, so you can see here uh, the tank feeds uh, what is on board. Uh, uh, you know what would be a traditional diesel motor. Um, and they've replaced that with um, a generating system. Uh, so no need really to generate the power here anymore. It's a, it's a rethought of, of what our traditional way of generating power to the rear axle um, has done through traditional internal combustion uh, engines, you know, our traditional diesel engines. So if we can just replace that with a generator, uh, the generator provides uh, basically power. That's it. So uh, RNG to power the generator and the generator to produce the charge for the battery systems, okay? Battery systems here uh, located right below the cab uh, to power the e-motor, which is here, uh, and then to power each of the respective uh, rear axles. Now, this in and of itself is extremely powerful. Um, these are uh, dual axle um, uh, electric uh, drive axles. Um, these, to my knowledge, are uh, produced and installed by Meritor. Uh, so really exciting stuff. This does provide the regenerative braking uh, element to the Hypertruck ERX, but that's a system in a nutshell uh, in, in a one, two, three, four stage process. And if you want to understand more uh, and check out this visual that I used here, uh, please kick over to Hylion.com and uh, get yourself educated up on uh, what is coming to the marketplace. It is inevitable, guys. Um, there is no stopping it. This is absolutely what's going on here. Uh, and with the momentum now being really stalled out uh, with a looming uh, Q4 earnings call uh, coming around the corner for 2021, um, now is the time to dig in 
now is the time right now to realize the opportunity here with this company because you only get to realize it once uh, at these specific levels. Um, never ever have I seen an opportunity to get in on the ground floor of a company like this uh, looking to revolutionize the Class 8 trucking space in this particular manner. A lot of people would ask me, why would you invest in Hylion? What, what are you investing in? Make no mistake about it, guys. You are investing in an alt alternative fuel future. And um, it's spoken in plain language. Um, renewable natural gas is for real. And if the last five years is any indication of the direction of the fueling of uh, our uh, over-the-road transport system, uh, is going to be um, uh, you know, partially, uh, if not to a large degree, fueled by renewable natural gas where the application fits, um, you would be sorely mistaken and you would be betting against um, this increase that we've seen here in uh, the availability of renewable natural gas up 577% over the last five years with regard to its availability, I guess the scary question is here and where Hylion fits in to this equation is where are we going into the future? Um, are, are we going to just cease to exist on this opportunity? Are we going to pivot to a new alternative emerging fuel? Is the technology going to change so much uh, to potentially render this uh, option uh, unavailable? Uh, I, I contend no. And this is an interesting dichotomy between the people who are bullish and bearish with uh, highly on holdings is, is somehow to ignore the fact that we have methane emissions off of our landfills and off of our dairy farms that can be put to such a better strategic use than just off-gassing to the, uh, the atmosphere. Um, it can actually be captured it can actually be transported, and it can actually be used uh, as a fuel on board these systems here. So when people ask me, you know, what are you buying here with the stock price at four dollars, or or eight dollars, or twelve dollars? The folks that really, really understand this company are not the ones that are frequenting the Yahoo thread, uh, which is dead. <laughs> the Yahoo thread is dead. If you want to understand much more about this uh, company you can tune into the very few youtubers that are doing a pretty good job you can kick over to the discord group uh, which is is a, is an open and accommodating place where you can find out all kinds of information from the bullish thesis to the bearish thesis uh, with regard to this company uh, it is a startup um, they are not making and generating revenue at this point uh, for the bulls of the company it is irrelevant uh, to put that type of uh, criteria against this company when it is just premature to do so. Uh, but it is worth focusing on what you're investing in with regard to the future outlook for the company and what they're looking to do to, to harness this paradigm shift in the industry from a diesel-dominated um, uh, era uh, into an alternative fuel era, era uh, with the idea of um, stepping into a cleaner future, something that's going to be better for the atmosphere. But these four points on the bottom I just wanted to touch on, and again, located on Hylion.com, this is more of a tutorial on my insights and what I extrapolate when I uh, view this. I go to Hylion.com um, at, at minimum, at minimum weekly, um, and check for updates. But the intelligent electric powertrain is is an interesting enough. Why not garner the data off of the um, uh, the rig itself? Why not use that data? Use the, um, uh, the the technology that's available right now to press it through the algorithms with useful data on the back end. They should be able to game out on this truck and provide preventative maintenance to the fleets. Make no mistake about it, guys. There is a technology aspect uh, surrounding this company and it gets missed all the time. Everybody is just on the mechanical side of it. Oh, they don't produce a product. Oh, they bolt themselves, bolt products together. Um, it, none of that is just true. It's all vague assumptions about Hylion.com and, and uh, a failure to recognize that 
the battery technology, they own it. Um, they acquired that battery company back in 2017. Um, they own it, and they've made it their own. Um, there, there is absolutely everything proprietary that they have um, with their eight-minute charging uh, type of perspective, which I think has a multi-use application that has not yet been exploited. I, I think the sky is the limit for the technology in its multi-use application. Uh, as we speak right now, the company is laser focused on uh, putting the Class 8 over the road transport solution into, um, into the hands of the fleet so we can move to low scale production and then eventually uh, massive scale production uh, on the low end as this thing starts to gain some traction. Uh, reduced ownership uh, over time, that's the TCO that we talk about, total cost of ownership, um, very, very simple calculations. A little bit more of uh, an upfront cost, and I want to talk about how in my uh, deep dive this week, I, I do a, a deep dive every single Sunday morning for you guys before I put this out, and I think something that's being missed all the time with the reduced cost of ownership is assuming that it costs more on the onset. Hylion is declaring that over the course of a 7 to 10 year product cycle that the cost will be driven down in, a, well, really just a twofold. There are a lot of benefits, but the two that are going to drive TCO the best are, uh, of course, the fuel savings. That is that is the big one, okay? And number two is the payload. If they can increase the amount of payload that's carried uh, per trip, right, per load, um, and that uh, would uh, complement or supplement the bottom line uh, enough to pay back the rig, uh, over the over the life of that truck, okay, it's almost a, an opposite philosophy of the diesel truck, and then on the onset you're getting actually a cheaper truck, uh, but one that's going to cost you double uh, the cost in fuel over that same seven year period, uh, as going with something like a Hylion product where you pay for the technology up front, uh, and then look to soften that curve over time with the, the total cost of ownership as you realize those cost saving benefit over owning that asset over the over the long term. So that that really is the key and that's the reverse and that is exactly what the sales team is working on right now. Um, sometimes I wish I could align with them and go sell this stuff to people because um, this is an easy sell. This is not difficult. Uh, people want to harp on and bears especially the fact that they don't have sales at this point. Um, this thing is going to sell itself. And I want to mention the TCO piece. That is assuming that these uh, fleets are going to pony up the entire 100% of the upfront cost for these units. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. I think there is grant programs that are being missed here with this highly on opportunity. Um, I looked into a few specifically this morning that were extremely excited. Um, with the Texas Emissions uh, Reduction Plan, there are grants available right now to Class 8 fleets. And what, what I would want to understand, and, and, and I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here, but if you don't think that these fleets are aligning their applications to at least put their foot forward for grant applications on the state and federal level, um, you're sleeping on this opportunity. I'm here to tell you, man, that that stuff is absolutely real. Um, it is these uh, these uh, uh, coalitions are hungry to provide that incentive to fleets that are looking to transition to um, not only upgrading old uh, e equipment uh, as well as integrating new into their fleets. And this is something that um, Thomas Healy is very very quiet about, uh, and rightfully so. I I think Hylion, and this is just my own personal insight. I think they know they've got the goods. I do. I think they know they've got the goods. Um, I think they know that they don't have to come out with daily information and updates just for the sheer sake of, of, of propping up the company. I think they feel like their time is better spent behind the scenes, making sure that they get this opportunity right. Because I think if you look at this company on the surface, you're probably not going to see what it is you need to see to justify um, getting excited about the prospects of, of what this company is trying to do. Put investing aside. I don't do this um, project for the sake of getting people into an opportunity that they don't understand. 
As a matter of fact, if you don't understand this opportunity, I charge you with doing your due diligence and understanding that education is the key to this. And I will say it again, education is the key to this. Are we on the uh, precipice and potential with technology and new fuel availability to step into a cleaner future uh, with the uh, technology that is brought to bear by companies like Hylion to actually propel cargo from point A to point B over the road? I believe that we are. And it's not going to do you any good to look at a company like this from the surface level and say, okay, well, I'm going to buy 100 shares of it. I'm going to put 400 bucks into the company right now at $4 a share because that's all you're going to see. You're just going to see a stock that's at $4 a share and you're not going to understand the uh, opportunity going forward with this company. And we all know about the infrastructure that does exist here with the multiple fueling stations that's available uh, across North America, Canada alike. And so I'm not going to go too much into that. There's a lot of information on the website uh, that will provide you the information on those locations uh, and the availability of that fuel uh, for, uh, for fleets going forward as they, as they work the solution. And, and finally, I've touched on the driver familiarity. I think one of the, the real bullish uh, elements of Hylion that I, that I loved so much that I just did not like in, in most all of the other applications, Tesla, Hyzon, Nikola. The one thing that I really liked about Hylion is they put the attention where it needed to be and no more. They felt like they did not need to go head to head against OEMs that had been turning out trucks over the long term and getting that driver familiarity you know, getting these drivers comfortable with the truck that they've become accustomed to. And I think that that was huge to basically change the powertrain and leave the truck the hell alone. Do aesthetics matter? I don't know. Maybe the bottom line would tell you that it doesn't, but I'm not one to make that case. Perhaps maybe the drivers might have a different tone when they're discussing whether or not they want to trade in their uh, Freightliner or trade in their Peterbilt uh, to drive a Tesla. I mean, are they going to get their ass kicked at the at the truck stop because they uh, pull into the truck stop driving some idiotic looking uh, uh, toy truck uh, that they're, they're going to be the laughing stock of everybody? I, I, I push that out there to be somewhat scathing and a little bit entertaining as well. But, but think of the reality. The status quo doesn't need to change with regard to the aesthetics of the truck. It doesn't need to change. Why not keep that the same? Keep the driver familiar, familiarity intact and provide the drivers perhaps a better driver experience in, in way of the quiet ride, um, the onboard uh, pilot monitoring program, uh, and just to increase the uh, overall driver experience through technology to allow a little bit more assistance to the driver for the over-the-road experience, and that that really does sum up my bullish conviction. One of a very one of many uh, on this company as to why I justify having as large of a position as I do in the company, and my conviction has not wavered one bit. As a matter of fact, as the stock goes down, my conviction goes up. It's just that simple. If you guys want the nuggets, or you want to know, you know, where where my head is as far as you know, oh my goodness, the stock's going out of, it's going to zero. It's not going to zero. Um, these guys are working on the very precipice of engaging in a very, very lucrative opportunity going forward. Uh, and the sky is the limit. And it's easy right now to say that they're not going to do that because the stock price does not indicate that they are setting themselves up to do that. I just, I beg to differ. And this is really the impasse between the, the bear and the uh, bull thesis on this company is to project that, you know, over the next five years, uh, are, are they putting together the pieces enough to step into this industry um, and, and make an impact? And I contend that they absolutely do. And this is um, just a few things here that I wanted to note for you guys on why, why you invest in this company. It's a lot of different pieces to be put together. Uh, to see a larger picture than just the fragmented uh, evaluations or scrutiny that's placed on this company uh, from day to day.
when we talk about the highly on opportunity and I, I pick fun at the Tesla uh, trucks pulling into the truck truck stop and the poor truck driver gets out and you know everybody's laughing their ass off at him you know the the, the, the I don't say that to be rude um, yeah I kind of do actually because this is something that Hylion receives a lot of scrutiny uh, I think for uh, for a lot of reasons that I, I don't really understand um, the Hylion opportunity allows a truck driver to pull into its station and enjoy downtime that is comparable to diesel and this is really the angst within the industry is that if the truck is going to incur uh, over the uh, time necessary to charge the batteries that they um, would normally uh, just pull off and spend, you know, 20, 25 minutes of, of fueling evolution. If they're spending 45 minutes plus to charge uh, the system, that it, over the long term is downtime that is going to uh, impact negatively the bottom line. And this, again, amongst many, is, is one of the very, very specific reasons as to why this opportunity is not to be taken lightly. Now, I mentioned the improved payload uh, capacity versus the uh, electric vehicle. Um, this is huge. This, this goes without saying with the uh, 80,000 pounds here of, uh, of, of fully loaded capacity, um, it would take an overload permit, uh, it is to my understanding, um, to actually carry more than the 80,000 of, of payload, um, and it can do so with relative ease. Um, the, the efficiency here uh, on the cost savings to run the RNG, 35% less expensive. That, that, that is enormous. And, and that is with one unit. When these fleets start doing the calcs on multiple units, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100, plus 1,000 units, um, then that fuel savings becomes uh, really glaring when you're looking at an industry here that's demanding that this shift happened. This shift to RNG, the shift toward a hydrogen fuel cell uh, future, the shift toward in certain applications above a uh, fully electric future uh, is happening and it will happen. Whether or not you like it or not, it will happen. Um, the question is in what capacity? Uh, the question is how fast? Um, and the question is and with what type of um, how much uh, um, the resistance is going to be met by the industry. And I, I'm very, very uh, uh, in, adamant about searching for that information to provide me some insight on how accepting the industry is going to be to meet the demands of their customer who are demanding of them that they go green. Very, very important piece to this once we dig below the surface and understanding that the customers, okay, not the fleets, but the customers of said fleets are demanding that by nature of meeting their obligation as a customer, that these fleets have got to do a better job of, uh, of, of providing that service with less impact to the environment. And this is really just the groundswell of when I look at comments like Hylion is going to zero, these comments come out of somebody who uses about less than 1% of their brain power because that's not going to happen. Um, I'm right. They're wrong. It's, it's just that simple. I can't provide it to you in any other capacity. Now, is it going to happen tomorrow? Perhaps. Is it going to happen next week? Perhaps. Is it going to happen next month or next year? Perhaps. Nobody knows that. And I find it interesting the people who seemingly all the time have an idea about the disposition of this company and others for, for whatever reason. I'm not really sure I understand on the bull or bear case those that wouldn't want to see if you're an investor or not or you've been burned by the company. You wouldn't want to see this company succeed. And I think that's where a lot of the opinions are coming from is that 100% of investors who are invested in this company at this particular juncture are underwater and they're angry. They're angry at the company and they want to see it fail just to spite Thomas Healy and to spite this opportunity. And I, I, I think you have to be able to separate your emotion in the stock price 
to the opportunity that exists right there in front of us with this company. I, I think in a, a short order, whether it be next year or whether it be two years or three or five years down the line, we are going to look back at this opportunity and for those people who chose to scrutinize and be blinded by the opportunity that I'm trying to define for you every single week with this company. I will not miss a week. I will always have uh, information to talk about because there's so much to talk about with this company. I will continue to foot stomp it and there's no better time to foot stomp this opportunity than when everybody else has seemingly left this company for dead. There is no better time to talk about the opportunity when this with this company when you can pick up a thousand shares of the company right now for 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 four thousand bucks, it, it it is just insane. It is insane the opportunity that you have to get in on the ground floor and be part of the step and movement into a direction that's going to clean up the planet. It's going to become more efficient. It's going to render that opportunity to those fleets and the total cost of ownership to the bottom line to realize that that, that they can get. Uh, longer distance, <laughs> they can have just as fast a refueling as indicated by this slide here. They can tow more payload. They can become more efficient. They can preserve the driver experience going forward, and they can do all of that with the Hylion experience. When you top on top of that the incentive programs that I read through the TERP program, T-E-R-P, it, it'll take you to Texas um, but this is right in their wheelhouse, okay? Read a little bit on HEB and their initiative going forward. If they're not talking to HEB, um, I will eat crow because this company needs to be beaten down doors right now. These companies are hungry for these solutions, and I think Hylion knows it. I think they know it, and they have not come out and said, we know it. They know they know it, and they do not have to communicate that at this particular juncture because they do not want to spill the beans before they have this Hypertruck ERX ready. The EX Hybrid is ready. Fantastic product. It's ready to go. That right there through the grant and incentive program can ensure that a certain number of those dollars are supplemented to these companies' bottom line by opting to take on this new technology and upgrade their trucks. I've seen this before. I've seen it in the industry. I'm being very careful with my words here, guys, but this is very, very real. If you're a fleet owner and you're looking to improve your uh, your your uh, fleet of, of vehicles, okay, you're more apt to do that if you have a supplement to the bottom line to say, yes, I want to be called upon with this movement going forward uh, but, but I don't want to take on 100% of the risk to take on new technology. What if it doesn't perform as if it does? Chances are it will, right? But you're still going away from what has been tried and true in your business, right, to take on uh, a new technology that is unproven. I'm willing to take this risk for you. The question is, what percentage of supplement to the bottom line uh, is a, a, a state-led uh, program, or even, should I say, a government-led program to the bottom line. These are the things that I'm forecasting into the future are a very, very viable reality for this company and for the fleets that look to opt for the Hylion program going forward. It's not going to be 100% risk to the bottom line. It's not going to be sales like we think of sales. It's going to be a supplement, sales to the bottom line to Hylion, yes, but a supplement to the customers as they turn over the keys to these products to put these uh, 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 products to work and see them work and be a, a little bit of a shared in the, um, uh, the inherent risk that's always available with working through kinks in new technology as they put this stuff to work. So uh, Hylion doesn't have a product. Um, I'd like you just to watch this for just a second and you can you can tell me if you don't see product in the forefront and the backdrop of this video. Um, guys, I don't I don't do this to pick fun. If you want to be a bull or a bear on this company, no problem. The choice is totally yours and you'll have to make your conviction uh, on whether or not this is a company that's worth following uh, into the future or not. No problem. Um, I'm not doing this to boost the, the stock. I'm doing this to boost the awareness of the company as I feel like 
the, the education piece is key, and I'm borrowing that from a good friend of the Independent Investor channel. I, I When I heard that, I thought that is really, really insightful, and it was from Paul with Rat Pack Stocks. He talked about the importance of education. I would go out on a limb and say, how many large trucking fleets actually know that these guys exist? That's a scary question. Um, how much of the general populace understands the real world application uh, for natural gas? You know, I mean, you know, I, I prefer it in my home. Um, whereas, you know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I would have said, no way. I like the instantaneous electric you know, opportunity. But now I would prefer natural gas. It's significantly cheaper. It's safer. Uh, it, it's it's um, just as good. Uh, and it, it's a fantastic way of, uh, of of integrating something that's good for the environment that doesn't have to be produced using the, the grid. We can, you know, burn that product and, and, and have it be good for the environment. But this here is key. When I talk about these nuggets of bullish thesis on Hylion, this is one. Um, net negative carbon emissions, okay? When I heard this on the onset, I thought, yeah, right. Um, it, it's actually better for the environment the more the truck runs. Just think about that for a second. Transportation is the number one polluter on this earth. If you do not know that, it is part of why this Hylion community is so sticky. So sticky. I mean, if I can give my best uh, uh, um, compliment to this Hylion community, uh, we'll ride this bitch down as far as it needs to go before it's realized. Because right now, EVs are about as out of favor as any sector as I've ever seen coming off of a year where they were all the craze. This was going to get integrated right away, overnight, it's in. All these companies are going to 100. It's just happening, and that's the way it's going to be. That is not the way it turned out in the stock market. And the stock market did something that uh, I contend that it does all the time, and that's humble uh, any new investor who thinks that they can just forecast where things are going to go. Uh, to this point, Hylion, this sticky community of stock owners in this company, have been wrong. Uh, up to this point. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Does it change your disposition of a company? Does it change your disposition on the uh, on, on the direction of the company? Does it change your stock position? It should. You should buy more. I mean, that that, that really is is the, the, the sticking point for a lot in the community here. Uh, but for me, I like to put these awareness videos out and let you guys know where my head is with those real cornerstones of what I evaluate in a company uh, and understanding that, no, this company does not have earnings at, at this point. Um, it, it is not one of those criteria that I would put on the company and say it's a, it's, a, it's a yes or a no with regard to me placing my dollars in the company. You have to be more holistic with your application in understanding that in this game, in speculative investing on companies that do not uh, turn revenue just yet, uh, that is part of the game. And you have to be willing to wait it out to make sure that the vision is realized. Uh, investing in a vision, that could scare a lot of people, rightfully so, no problem. You shouldn't be investing in a vision if you can't handle the swings necessary to, to, to realize that vision over time. It's just that simple. That is the game. And I think, you know, 99% of the people, maybe even they look at my Twitter feeds and they're like, this guy doesn't under the, understand the game. Uh, the folks that know me understand that I know the game just as well as anybody in the game. It's just that simple, okay? And I know the game enough to play the game to try to get some probers and feelers out there to ensure that people understand that the retail investing community, that sticky community that I talk about, is very, very real. And when this thing goes up, it's going to be really, really real in that there's not going to be shares available on the marketplace to buy when this thing go, go, goes up. And when it does start going up, it is going to be a feeding frenzy like you've never seen tomorrow because all of these things that I earmark that does not change with the company in the direction that it's heading at $4 or $50 a share. It doesn't change. 
My approach and my education on Hylion Holdings does not change. The opportunity is still the same. That's why I believe the deliberate approach from Hylion.com or Hylion and the staff uh, is prudent at this time because they know what they have. It's just that simple. They know what they have and they, no they are not going to banter uh, to the whims of the stock market uh, at this particular juncture that's earlier on in their product cycle. But the net negative carbon emissions is one of those bullish convictions because companies can take that factor on and they can offset some of the net positive uh, scores that they have within their organizations that uh, they, 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 they cannot reduce. There are some of those things that are just polluting entities within their organization and this initiative allows them to use this net negative score and it's a freaking big one within their fleet. Talk about a fleet of a thousand or 2,500 or 5,000 or 10,000 trucks where each one of them are deriving a net negative carbon emission score. This is why you have bullish shareholders like Rick in the community that runs the Discord group. But because he understands this and many other the, of the other bullish thesis that we come up with on this company, right? You understand what the value of this is to fleets. Right now, the stock market says there is no value. There's no value. The only value in Hylion right now is being priced at liquidation. The only value is being priced at liquidation. It's very, very important to understand that. Right now, they are begin giving no credit at all for putting a product out there that can generate net negative carbon emissions. I think that's a mistake, and I think that's just one of the many, many disconnects and opportunities that the stock market has provided over the last hundred years to would-be investors, especially in companies like this, with the availability of information out there. All you're charged with is just educating yourself up and then making a decision for yourself whether or not you want to take a position in this company or pass, okay? None of the idling, all of the driver comfort, this is uh, interesting enough. Uh, with the APU unit, uh, just uh, adding to the driver experience here. Uh, and then one thing that we did not have any idea about is the ability of the Hypertruck ERX, or at least I did not. I believe they released this information after uh, going after the ZEV credits uh, for the 75 miles of all electric run. This is huge. When this information came through, the stock price went up for a couple days and went right back down. It's everything that is being uh, projected in, the, in, in this, and I think there's a little bit of foul play going on here. That's why I think the Hylion community is calling bullshit on this, and they're remaining sticky with their shares. Because something is awry, and I cannot put my finger on it. I can't put my thumb on it. I try. I, I scour the landscape to look and see what is going on. What is happening to make... This company trade in direct correlation with companies that it really doesn't have anything to do with, Nikola and Hyzon. If Nikola and Hyzon are up, Hylion will be fractionally up. When Nikola and Hyzon are down big, Hylion will be down bigger. And I don't understand that direct correlation between those two companies because the, 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 there are no similarities. There are none. They're in the same space. That's the only similarity, but their uh, approach to how they're offering their product to the marketplace are extremely different. And I think that separation of these companies as they mature going forward is going to be a huge catalyst because everything that I've mentioned thus far in this awareness video is going to be realized and it's going to be scrutinized. But I certainly don't see any analyst that uh, Hylion seemingly wants to glorify on their website coming out and explaining things in the way that I do. I don't see the information being constantly put forward like I do on Paul's channel with Rat Pack Stocks. I don't see the continued dialogue going on anywhere else except for the Discord group that exists to try to generate that churn and give this company a fair shake and set them apart. I will be attempting to offer a, a question to the docket on the earnings call. Um, I will absolutely be calling in with my question. Now, whether or not they allow me uh, the floor for uh, a minute or two to address uh, both Sherry and Thomas with regard to my question, it will be a twofold question. 
the first will speak to the uh, bullish thesis that they've arrived at and the disconnect between how the market views uh, highly on holdings with the recessed stock price and how their bullish thesis has allowed them the, um, uh, the unabated ability to build out their team um, and what they see uh, to help them arrive at their bullish thesis. The second question that I'll have is regard to their OEM integration. Uh, uh, I, there's a few stopping points for me with regard to what is going to be the major catalyst with highly on holdings. Um, once we step into low volume production, which I think we're quasi in that stage now, um, but um, the ability to transition from low volume production to high volume on the low end scale, I've got about 2,500 units uh, per quarter actually uh, for Hylion to keep the lights on. Um, and, and that is on the low end of the range. Anything above that is icing on the cake. Um, we, we, we can all um, have our Hylion party at that particular juncture because we've all uh, really put quite simply, uh, put a position, myself included, uh, in a company that uh, we had 100% conviction on and they just realized that conviction. That it's not, it's not luck, it's just, it is what it is. It's stock market investing. Don't, don't try to make it more than what it is. If you're looking to hit a home run with this company, you can say it however you want. Um, the company's going to do one of two things, either go up or go down. Uh, and my conviction with the company allows me to justify um, the odds that I put on my set side in, in making sure that that happens, uh, the critical piece to that recipe is time. It's just that simple. Everybody wants to try to make this company out to be more than what it is now. And uh, it may just be premature. And so if you're going to make those premature decisions now, based on what you see now, no problem. It's, 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 uh, it's your world, boss. You can do what you want. That's the beauty of stock market investing. Um, you know, people may misconstrue my approach to how I feel about Hyleon, how I feel about certain elements of, of the company, lack of transparency. I think they could do a better job as of late. I think they've cleaned some of that stuff up. I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm not, you know, I'm not being unrealistic with my demands of a publicly traded company. If you don't like my demands, go private. It's just that simple. I'm a shareholder and I'm a big shareholder at that. I'm entitled to my opinion. It's just that simple. Okay, and a lot of people think that uh, I need to keep my opinions to myself. Um, that's not going to happen either. Um, just like you, uh, I have the right to uh, state my opinion, and, and a lot of people would agree with me. It doesn't really matter. I don't need validation amongst the investing community to uh, arrive at my thesis that I think that, you know, even just a little bit of an educational piece that I look to supplement every single week on the channel can be made through HighlyOnHoldings.com and I think it can be made through their uh, social media outreach. You know, look, if they're incurring delay, fill up some of that delay with some of the progress that they're being made on this particular side. But the OEM integration is a key piece to my question for Thomas. It'll be my question number two. Has not been mentioned since Q2 of 2021 uh, with regard to the OEM hubs. You can see here the note uh, to the OEMs uh, on the uh, OEM giving fleet customers the needed choice of brands uh, and built to order options while also leveraging existing trained mechanics and parts inventory. Um, this is one of the key factors as to why in my evaluation I looked to take a bullish uh, stake in this company on the onsite was for that very reason right there. Now, if you go back to the original investor presentation, there's a couple of companies there. I, I, I forget uh, the names of them, and I do apologize for that. Matter of fact, I might actually have... No, I don't. I don't have the old presentation readily available for you guys. I do apologize. But if I did, they basically spoke to the Hylion uh, uh, warehouse right now acting as the low-scale production OEM, for lack of better terms. It's, it's, it's the low-production warehouse. It's not fair to call them an, an original equipment manufacturer because they are not, but, but they are supplementing that need. And then if you follow the flow of thought from Hylion, the idea is to get that low flow volume into the hands of fleets as well as their hyper truck uh, intubation council uh, and those uh, select customers that will get that um, those uh, those units in their hand uh, and then provide that back pressure to the OEMs themselves to offer 
these options to the fleets that want to integrate. And that is going to be the catalyst right there that steps highly on from low volume production into high volume production uh, with um, uh, uh, really being called upon with the OEMs side by side. Um, that is key. And that'll be one of the questions that I ask is, you know, what progress is being made on the OEM front? Um, are there new OEMs other than Peterbilt to, uh, that can be named? Um, has there been any progress in solidifying those said relationships to know that those would be available um, when needed uh, to be called upon to offer the Hylion uh, package to these would-be fleets to meet those, uh, 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 um, uh, those low carbon emissions goals that these fleets have made possible through the Hylion solution. So um, the Class 8 experience Hylion has designed, developed, and de delivered our parallel hybrid solution on several OEM trucks. That's the uh, OEM agnostic uh, application here, which, it, which is great. Uh, we've already talked about the predictive analytics uh, and the multiple battery configuration options. This is interesting enough. Uh, if you want more power, uh, you can get the larger battery. Um, if you want to have the 75 miles, I understand that that uh, requires a larger battery pack uh, to be sold. So those uh, fleets that uh, need to have the ability to operate in the Los Angeles markets, um, those cities that require those low emissions protocols, um, they can do that through the Hylian solution with the uh, uh, optionality of their proprietary battery system that they've got. Um, perhaps maybe it's just my uh, insight at this particular juncture uh, with regard to my um, my utter uh, a disappointment in the uh, uh, highly on innovation council um, and it, and it may just be nature of the timing on this uh, and the necessity to add the critical ingredient of time to the process here going forward but I, I think my disappointment comes from uh, omitting a, a couple of these that have have um, you know put themselves out there, uh, and a, and a few that aren't. I, you know, Detmar has done more for Hylion, I think, than um, you know to be called upon with ANG and Agility and and uh, you know some of the other ones that have placed um, non-binding orders. You know, I, you know, Monet has placed a non-binding order. They're not part of the Innovation Council, and I, I look at some of these folks and. You know, a lot of these folks are, are, are um, cherry-picking uh, other opportunities as well, uh, as they should. Um, they should absolutely have the right to pursue other opportunities. But, you know, when I look at some of these um, companies that have been provided the opportunity to uh, comment on and their inability to put a non-binding order on the, on the table uh, makes me question a few things. Uh, number one... It is the desire to shift uh, to a, uh, a renewable type of alternative fuel future really in their best interest right now? Uh, are they continuing to hold on to the past because that is what is tried and true? That is where the me metrics are drawn off of. Uh, and in today's economy with supply chain restraints, it's just too much to try to explore new technology I don't know because we're not provided that information. But you know, every every time I see a, a Schneider truck on the road or a Ruan truck on the road, these are big fleets, guys. Every time I see a Werner truck, uh, specifically, I, I know Wegmans is probably put forward, and I don't want to be uh, overly harsh in my scrutiny, but 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 I kind of do on some of these companies that. And in my dealings with the old investor relations point, I, I will not name by name um, because they are no longer with the company here. Um, I, I posed the question, look, what, what's the thought about expanding the Innovation Council, number one? Number two, how did you arrive at putting you know, an Anheuser-Busch on there and not a Molson Coors? Uh, and the answer I got was that they didn't want competitive entities within the council. Oh, okay, in that they wouldn't be forthcoming sitting uh, at a round table or with Hylion knowing that their proprietary secrets may uh, be volunteered to the council for the good of the cause here, right? Um, so they knew that if they put Coors, uh, Molson Coors and Anheuser Eiser Bush in the same uh, room that there would be uh, an angst to offer unabated uh, opinions with regard to the opportunity. Um, but, you know, I, I look at some of these folks as being kind of a non-starter on this Innovation Council, and I, 
I might be uh, premature. Uh, I might be unfair with that uh, observation at this point. But, you know, when you look at an agility, putting a thousand truck order on, on the books, <clears throat> is that uh, a positive or a negative for Hylian at this point? In other words, what is the chance that that agility order even gets realized? Um, we're, we're kind of in a dangerous period right now where a lot of that initial hype has died. It's gone. Uh, and all we have really is the sticky shareholders that do understand uh, the opportunity as the information allows us to understand it going forward. Uh, but 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 I question some of the um, some of the devotion in some of these companies that were named in this top eleven of of what was supposed to be uh, a, a, a council of members that really took this um, initiative going forward very very seriously. And I I would omit. American Natural Gas, I would admit uh, GPL, which is going to be involved in the fleet rollout here shortly. Um, they're next on the agenda to put the Hypertruck ERX into uh, their actual fleet, and, and by their name, uh, just suggest how committed they are. Their entire fleet right now runs, I believe, on compressed natural gas. So they've already taken these steps. I guess when I start to question some of these others, and agility I would take out of that, equation as well. There's been some content put forward by Anheuser-Busch. There's been some content put forward by uh, by Wegmans uh, and, and, and Ryder as well. Um, I, I would question some of the involvement up to this point. I, I really hope that that's something that transpires uh, over the coming months because when this Innovation Council was, was crafted, it was put out there, it was really put out there as being a, a, a streamlined driver um, just like the name implies here, the future of the commercial transportation industry, uh, you know, integrating with industry leaders, I, I don't see that that's really been something that's moved the needle for me. Uh, and I hope I, I end up being wrong on this, but for you guys that are new to the company, um, this was formulated to uh, take d drastically different businesses, drastically different chains uh, of supply chain, uh, and uh, look at the different terrains, uh, integrating the high Leon solution to each and every one of these different fleets out there uh, to, to, to understand their businesses and understand how, in different applications, how the high Leon uh, solution could deliver uh, to the bottom line on each and every one of these applications. But uh, going forward, I need to see more. This is just one of the many uh, bullish uh, conviction uh, uh, elements of Hylion. This is not this is not a negative thing. Um, it's just I've been fairly unhappy with the progress thus far in evaluating fairly uh, and putting some scrutiny on where I think there's room for improvement with the company going forward. Uh, and I think we'll realize that as we start to unfold um, the fleet demo process and as these folks take receipt uh, of their Hypertruck ERXs to really understand what it could potentially mean for each and every one of these uh, Innovation Council members. The last thing I want to mention here, and this will be something that I allude to if I'm given the opportunity to ask a question on the call, will be with regard to the progress over the last three weeks on job solicitation and more importantly job filling. If you believe that this company is growing on all fronts uh, only to falter and fall on its face, you're um, probably not seeing the true picture of what's going on. Now, uh, could they grow and could they fall on their face? Certainly. Uh, I, I find that uh, a cross current of, um, of thought that if I'm a bull on the company, I, I want to see nothing more than growth. And that's exactly what they're doing. And I think Hylion needs to be commended for um, the jobs that are solicited and the jobs that are filled. This is something that you can cover both in the Facebook group for, for Hylion holders. Um, we post those in there. Um, I've got one of my uh, good friends in the community, at least the independent investor community, community that, um, that uh, provides this information on a regular basis, and it's something that I will allude to. So their job growth and job filling is absolutely killing it right now, guys, and it's something to take into consideration uh, when educating yourself up on the progress being made at Hylion Holdings. All right, guys, so we've just come out of the uh, Hylion.com website. I, I certainly want to footstomp that. 
uh, as your opportunity and, and, and providing that, uh, that funnel for you for information. Hyleon has done a great job of updating that website with uh, the most recent product developments. Um, very, very easy to follow, very professional. Um, it was some educational on there as well. If you're not familiar with uh, Highland Holdings and what they bring to the table and what they're trying to do, the angle that they're trying to put to play and the products that they offer to the marketplace. Um, so definitely start there. Um, I, I wanted to jump in there with you guys and give you my uh, opportunity to explain some of those things as well as we walked through the website together. Um, sometimes those things can be a, a little bit challenging um, to understand. You know, I've, I've done my deep dive on, on highly on now for uh, about 24 months. Um, so I, I'm very well versed on the topic. I'm very well, well versed on what the company is trying to do. I've listened, listened to most of the deliveries of the CEO, Thomas Healy, uh, and we'll be adamantly waiting for this next earnings call that will close out 2021 here um, in uh, close out the Q4 uh, earnings. And uh, I'll be intently listening to that. I, I tried to stray away from some of the dialogue on the earnings call coming up here. Um, my expectations are relatively light for that. Uh, I think in, in relative terms, the uh, chalking up the success or non-success of a company uh, within the uh, context of what has been a, a dismal year, um, why expect that a quarter is going to cap up a dismal year um, in anything other than a dismal type of, you know, uh, type of sense. So I, you know, I have very low expectations, um, but, but I've defined a range of expectation that even if they would deliver on the high end, um, it, it, that it's going to be futile anyway. Uh, I, I think when uh, Sherry Baker talked about the immaterial uh, revenues in 2021, I, I think we need to take her, uh, her warnings at face value. I think that's a solid. I think it's right on the mark. Uh, had they turned out three times their estimate for hybrid EX uh, so, uh, uh, product sales at a thousand, I, I think that that would have still been immaterial. Um, in the eyes of what this company needs to do with regard to its uh, mass scale uh, after low-end production, after all of the product validations have been done, EPA certifications, uh, which will make them eligible for some of those uh, committees out there, those um, environmental stewardship committees that a lot of these uh, companies and, and fleets are already part of, uh, HEB being one of those. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's extremely important for us to remain sticky. I mean that in the, uh, um, the realest of sense, that's a hell of a compliment for um, this highly on community that's been forged in fire. There's no doubt about it. This has been absolutely atrocious. And uh, for anybody that uh, has walked this walk, you should be proud of yourself uh, for having the conviction on a company that uh, I'm looking at. And I don't, I don't see a lot of negative. Uh, I don't, if any, I, I see nothing but positive catalysts. Uh, I see nothing but opportunity uh, going forward, um, and I want to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm uh, foot stomping uh, the message through a time when there was lean information made available so that you guys can separate um, the, the bandwagon players from the real players when this thing does turn north, um, and I expect to be acknowledged as one of those few um, that uh, really delivered the information when it was um, very unpopular to do so. If you guys appreciate the information, I want to make sure and subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of this video, uh, share the message with anybody out there you know that could be hungry about information on Hylion, doesn't know much about the company. Uh, I make these for awareness purposes only to bring and shed light upon what this company is looking to do, stepping out of what has been a diesel-dominated uh, past uh, into what is uh, supposedly going to be uh, more of a carbon free emissions future. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.